All right. All praises to Ahiah, Baha Shem Yeshaya, Wawawak Gadash. That is all praises to the Father, in the name of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is Sabal Nabaya. Guys, when you get a chance, check out Big Judah's latest video. Ah, man, my flames are going up. It's cold out here, so I made a little fire. But now the wind is blowing on me. Never mind that, though. Um, check out Big Judah's video that he did on... Um, I forgot the name of the video. Tell you what, just check it out. I'm going to put it in the link because he is bringing mad truth, exposing the abominable church. So... Check out that video. The link is going to be in the description. Um, and you know that abominable church. What it is that they really... What really is their downfall is the same downfall that Satan had. And we're going to talk about that today. So we're going to start where we always start. We're going to start in Isaiah 28 verses 9 and 10. Oh, okay. It says, Who shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. All right. Now, guys, we're going to jump over to Psalms 119. And we're going to go to verse 104. Ah, there we go. Sorry, y'all, it's cold and my fingers are fumbling today. <clears throat> I'm trying to turn the page, but I just can't get it there. Okay. Verse 104 reads, Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Now we're going to drop down to verse 128. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts to be... Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. So guys, we understand that we get our understanding through the precepts, and we're going to do that again today. Let's go ahead and start in Ezekiel chapter 28. We're going to read verse 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. I want you to see that part where it says, Thine heart was lifted up. Thine heart was lifted up. Lifted up. It doesn't actually say that when you look at it in the Hebrew. It actually translates to, Thine heart was haughty. And another word for haughty is proud. So the iniquity that was found in Satan was that iniquity was pride. So his pride is what lifted him up. So let's take a look at pride. Let's see. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 13 and we're going to read verse 10. Only by pride cometh contention but with the well-advised is wisdom. So, only by pride cometh contention. So anytime there is any contention, there is pride, because the only way pride comes is by contention. All right, now let's go to uh, Proverbs chapter 28. I'm gonna read verse 25. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife, but he that putteth his trust in the Most High shall be made fat. So, he that is of a proud heart stirreth up contentions, because he what? He genders strife. So, again we're seeing where pride leads to contentions. All right. Now, it says that is of a proud heart. So let's see, let's check out the heart. Let's see what else goes on with the heart. Let's see. Let's go to Jeremiah. And we're going to look at, um, let's see. 
Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 17. And we're going to read verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Okay, so the heart is desperately wicked. Why is the heart desperately wicked? Okay, let's go back to, let's go to Ecclesiastes. And we're going to look in chapter 8. And we're going to read verse, let's see, nope, let's go to chapter 9. And we'll read verse 3. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. And there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil and madness is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. So, evil is in the heart. And we know that the heart is deceitful. And we know that pride is in the heart. Okay. Let's go to Matthew chapter 15. We're going to read verses 18 through 20. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies, these are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. So what proceeds out of the mouth comes from the heart, okay? Sorry guys, if you guys hear that ambient noise in the background, it's because the garbage man is here to pick up the trash cans. High is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. So the Most High is close unto them that are of a broken heart. Hmm. Broken heart, contrite spirit. That word contrite is the opposite of the word proud. When you're proud and haughty, you're up. But when you're contrite and humble, you're brought low. So the Most High, He wants you to bring yourself low. He wants you to break your heart. Okay. So now, let's actually go over to, let's go over to our Northern Kingdom book, the Book of Moore. And let's go to, let's see. <clears throat> let's go to, 2 Nephi, chapter 2, verse 7. Behold, he offered himself a sacrifice for sin to answer the ends of the law unto all those who have a broken heart and a contrite spirit, and unto none else can the ends of the law be answered. So, in order 
in order for you to receive the ends of the law, you have to be of a contrite spirit and a broken heart. Our ancestors knew this. Let me prove it. Let's go in our Apocrypha. Let's go to the Song of the Three Holy Children or the Prayer of Azariah. I'm not sure what it says in your record. Go to verse 16. Nevertheless, in a contrite heart and humble spirit, let us be accepted. You see that? You see how that works together? Nevertheless, in a contrite heart and a humble spirit, you have to put your pride away. You have to break yourself down. You can't come to him proud. You can't think he owes you something. You understand? You can't get in that vein of thinking. Yes, we are the children of a promise, but don't get it twisted. He is still the most high. And you have to come to him as such. Let's go to, let's see. Let's go back to our Northern Kingdom record. And this time, let's go to 2 Nephi chapter 4. And we're going to read verse 32. May the gates of hell be shut continually before me because that my heart is broken and my spirit is contrite. O Most High, wilt thou not shut the gates of thy righteousness before me that I may walk in the path of the low valley, that I may be strict in the plain road? You see that? We have to walk in the low valley. We have to make ourselves low. We have to break our heart and be of a contrite spirit. Remember, uh, I don't know which, which video, which lesson it was, but Elder I Yield did a lesson some time ago. And he said the Most High told him, if you're ever prideful, I'll never use you again. You see that? That goes for all of us. We all have to bring ourselves low. We have to be humble. Now, I know there are those people out there that don't like the word humble. It ain't about what you like. It's about what the scripture says. So get into these scriptures and obey them. That is if you want to see the kingdom. If you want something else, then do something else. All right. Now, let's go, let's see. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 58. We're going to read verse 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. For I will not contend forever, neither will I be always wroth. For the spirit should fail before me and the souls which I have made. Wow, so the Most High says, We're going to dwell with him if we be of a contrite and humble spirit. But remember that song Tony Braxton used to sing, Unbreak My Heart? This says that he will unbreak our heart. He will revive the spirit of the humble. You see that? Revive the heart of the contrite ones. So even though we break our heart, he will unbreak our heart. He will revive us. Isn't that inspiring? Wow. So, understand that if we want to walk with him in eternity, we have to break our heart. We have to bring ourselves low. Guys, before I get out of here, I want to actually read to you a hymn out of the Dead Sea Scrolls. 
Dead Sea. It's out of the Dead Sea Scrolls, and I want to tell you where you can find it if you have the Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, this is going to be under section IQH I0364Q427 32. So if, if you have the Dead Sea Scrolls, you know that they're categorized in fragments. So that's how you have to find that fragment. It's going to be under that heading and grouped together with those numbers. So I have the, the complete Dead Sea Scrolls in English. And um, if I'm not mistaken, mine is the seventh edition. Actually, it says revised edition, but I thought it said seventh somewhere. So I'm not sure if it's the revised edition or the seventh, but um, that's the one that I'm reading from. But I want you to go to, um, I want you to go to, we're gonna read the latter section. No, no, we'll read the whole thing. We're gonna read, we're gonna read, um, Hymn number 23, formerly number 18. As for me, I was frightened by thy judgments. Who is found clean in thy judgment? And what is man before thee? Thou bringest him to judgment, and he returns to dust, to his dust. My power, thou hast opened my heart for thy understanding and has unstopped my ears to lean on thy goodness. My heart murmurs, and my heart melts like wax. Because of iniquity and sin, blessed art thou, power of knowledge, who has established and thou hast met thy servant with this for thy sake. For I know thy loving kindness, and in thy mercies I hope in all my existence, and I bless thy name always. Do not forsake me, in the times of distress. They are confirmed in the ears of thy servant forever to announce thy marvelous tidings. Withdraw not thy hand that he may be confirmed in thy covenant and stand before thee forever. For thou, O my power, didst open a fountain in the mouth of thy servant. Thou didst engrave by thy measuring rod I'm sorry, by thy measuring cord, the mysteries upon his tongue, that out of his understanding he might preach to a creature and interpret these things to dust like myself. Thou didst open his fountain, that he might rebuke the creature of clay for his way. See that? For his way. And him who is born of a woman for the guilt of his deeds, that he might open the fount of thy truth, to a creature whom thou upholdest by thy might, according to the thy mercies. And, and I, a creature of clay, kneaded with water, a heap of dust, and a heart of stone, for what am I reckoned to be worthy of this? For into an ear of dust thou hast put a new word, and hast engraved on a heart of stone things everlasting. Thou hast caused the strain of spirit to return, that it may enter into a covenant with thee and stand before thee forever in the everlasting abode, illumined with perfect light forever, with no more darkness for unending seasons of joy and unnumbered ages of peace. And as for me, a creature of dust, isn't that beautiful? You see how the author of this passage repeatedly puts himself low so that the Most High might raise him up in the everlasting abode, illumined with light forever? The author of these passages, he understands. He understands that he doesn't get to be proud. He understands that he has to come before the Most High in fear and trembling. He understands that he has to come humbly before him because he understands that he will be brought low and the Most High will lift him up. And that is beautiful. To the Most High be the glory. All praises to the Ancient of Days. All praises 
to the Most High of Hosts. All praises to Ahaya, Bahashim Yeshaya, Wawawat Kadash.